In a world full of slay queens and dapper gentlemen, it is no secret that everybody wants to look good. And sometimes that could play in your favor, but then other times you can get a little bit of clap back for it. My name is Yinka Ladora, and today we are at Utopia Bar and Restaurant. I've got two of my really great friends waiting for me and we're gonna talk about it all, so let's go. Okay, so guys, you know how in Nigeria, one of the favorite things that people like to say is kind of like, ah, you can't talk to me anyhow, or like, don't you know who I am? Like, ah, don't you see what I'm wearing? Don't you see the, you know? Am I your classmate? Yeah, exactly, am I your classmate? And then it gets me thinking, like, do we really, like, address people based on the way that they're dressed? in this country and not just you know just our big mans but also between us as men and women you know um do we judge certain women you know from a guy's perspective if you see a girl if she's dressed you know very like free and she's loving her life and she loves the body that she's worked for do we tend to judge based on that definitely definitely and i don't actually think it's just a nigerian thing i think it's um universal i mean if you're in America and you're a young black boy wearing baggy jeans and a hoodie, right. people are going to instantly assume that you're a thug coming to rob mm. their store or something like that. Whereas if you're wearing a nice suit, tie and everything, you look like you're um, You plan successful. to rob the store. <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to just run in there. You know? um, I think you're right. I mean, they, there's an old saying, they say dress how you want to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And um, it doesn't mean that it's always going to be the true depiction of who the person is. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people like to express themselves in different ways, but um, you'll always get you know, a first impression. It could be a negative impression, but somebody will always think, in a certain direction just based on how you're dressed. But then can that also be like good and bad, right? Because it was that um, that Will Smith movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, where he was like mm -hmm. dressed the part and whatever, the whole time he was like homeless, living in the subway, but well, right. got this really good job because of it. Do you think that s certain people benefit from the system, whereas c certain people are, I guess, punished by that system? Yeah, oftentimes I think. Um, I, I think that for a long time, a lot of people have just said, let me just try to get off on the look. I mean, you hear about stories about people living in their cars, even, in, even here in Nigeria, people pushing Range Rovers and they don't really have much else, but they're you know, out there hustling, trying to grind for a contract or something like that. So yeah, I think that a lot of people use it to their advantage. Yeah, and one thing I've learned living in Nigeria is it's all about packaging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lucky big boys, lucky big girls, it's all about packaging. So do you think that women get more of the brunt of you know, just how you're dressed versus guys can just kind of, you know, finesse their way through anything. I think so, depending on where you're going. I think when it's going to be that estate setting, a lot of people just naturally feel like, okay, well, if it's a single lady, she's going to either live with her parents or else she's going to be going to see a man somewhere. You know what I mean? So, yeah, in that aspect. But I think a lot of people just size you up right from the beginning. But, yeah, I think... Do, do you know what? As a woman living in Nigeria, I don't even think it's necessarily the way you dress. I feel it's because you are a young woman and you're single that um, people just assume that either you're sleeping with somebody for money or um, you know or you should be with your family because I have been to restaurants and bars with my friends and we don't dress you know in revealing clothes and they tell us that we can't come in unless we are accompanied by a man hmm. yes and I'm like look at us even the way we talk look at the way we dress do we resemble your idea of you know a prostitute but it's just the fact that we are young single women that but, is but a taboo maybe, in society. Maybe, maybe prostitutes are up in their game a little well, that's bit. That's what I was going to you know say. I mean? Well, They're... I mean, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was going to say is though that, um, so as you were saying that statement and you're talking about, okay, look at the way we're dressed and whatever, that takes me back to Amber Rose slut walk, which is the whole premise of that walk that just because I'm dressed the way that I want to dress and the way that I want to express myself doesn't mean that I'm necessarily a woman of the night. Uh, right. You know, that's yeah. not necessarily my profession. So why do you think that we, um, as society, why do you think we're so judgmental? Because, I mean, I mean, I know you didn't mean to say, but even you said it, you were like, well, I'm not just, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I feel, do you know what? I feel it's just the ideology we've been, that has been put into our heads, you know, from the day we were raised. I remember when I was younger and I wanted to wear a pair of shorts, my mom would be like, ah, why are you revealing your legs? <laughs> I have African parents. So she's like, why are you revealing your legs like this? But at the same time, I agree with you. The way you dress doesn't necessarily determine whether or not you are, um, in quotes, a prostitute or cheap or you, 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 know, you spread your legs. But it's just the way we've been brought up to believe. Um, people perceive a woman 
who wears mm -hmm. um, little clothing as somebody who is easy because she's already mm -hmm. revealing. Mm -hmm. But I, I do feel society is shifting. I mean, back in the day, 50 years from now, we as women probably wouldn't be able to wear trousers or, you know, mm -hmm. mini skirts. So it's getting better, but we still are very mm -hmm. unequal right. when it comes I, to... I, you know, the aspect that you said judgmental, I think that, you know, we still have such a religious based society mm -hmm. one aspect and then also we have a which is kind of extreme of keeping up with the Jones, Joneses society as well so um we have this whole moral values thing that we're always trying to push even though what's actually happening behind the scenes is not so moral you know and so um I think that's one of the bases of judgment that people always want to be judging they want to use a, a religious context to judge somebody uh -huh. and if somebody's dressing a little bit more revealing they'll say okay religiously but then in the same light, everybody wants to be shining in Nigeria. Everybody wants That's to say, okay, well, you know what, let me be the one who's going to be flashy. And and so you get this, um, I, maybe like a duality of society. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you, it's, yeah. it's kind of like like a hypocritical kind right. of Right, exactly, connection. exactly. Yeah. So, and people want to judge you based on that because people want to be close to the money as well and they're willing to do okay. a lot for it. And so, and then when it comes to judging the girls, I mean, there's been, if you go to any club now, like, it's hard to go and meet a girl in the club a lot of the times and in the back of your mind you're just hoping oh man i hope that she's not a runs girl i hope she's not out okay. here working so so i think that's kind of spoiled your entry into clubs and stuff or yeah. wherever you're going just because of that as well but, but can i actually now that you brought that up right because when i moved to nigeria this was the first place that i actually notable clubs and i'm not going to say where but you know who you are <laughs> you know you clubs uh when you try to come in They'll actually tell certain females that they can't come in and not because they're just too revealing, but because they're not revealing enough. Really? Yes. Really? They're like, oh, you're not, you're not the type. You're not that, just for a club. You know, you're not just for a club. You don't look like you're ready to have a good time, da da da. So, they, really? so it's kind of weird that it's like they're telling you that you, but now if I'm at a club, I'm dressing like this so that I can gain entry. But that does not mean that you get entry right, into right, right. what's going on here. You know what I mean? And it's funny because Nigerian club business is like an old man's game. The old guy's the cool guy in the club, you know, opposed to other places where a lot of young guys are like the mm -hmm. main people in the club, the mainstay of the club. So it's like they're just trying to appeal to these older guys, I think, a lot of the time. So maybe that's why they'll say, they'll say okay, well, you can't come in. You're not ready to have fun because mm -hmm. they want their old spenders to say, okay, yeah, you know what? There's some pretty that ladies around. Drag. Let's spend some money. To do okay, yeah. Tag, I want to ask you a question. I know that you're not going to speak for all guys, all right. right? But do guys really care? Like, if you see a girl that, you know, is just wearing, like, I don't know, short shorts, tank top, tube top, maybe she has her belly button pierced and, like, a tongue ring. When you look at that, do you think, oh, she's a runs girl? Because it really begs me to think, do guys actually put this much weight on it? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I think that everywhere is dependent on the environment you. you meet the person in. Mm -hmm. So, thanks. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you go to church, <laughs> she's just like that, you're gonna probably think twice about her, you know what I mean? But apart from that, I think that we're getting to that era of Nigerian society that people should be able to express themselves the way they want to. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, but yeah, like you said, it's just the way I'm thinking. Okay, I wanna take a different uh, spin or a different approach for this whole dress, how you wanna be a dress thing. Should you dress according to who or what you want to attract? Right. Like, so do men and women dress a certain way because we care about, you know, the opposite sex because we're trying to attract the opposite sex? Or are we just doing it because, like, this is how I am? Like, what if Cardi B wants to dress the way she wants to dress, but she wants to marry a Bill Gates? Like, is that not OK? Can she not get with a Barack Obama? No. Why not? But she got to just position herself well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that to a large extent, I mean, most everybody kind of dress, dresses for the opposite sex. To an extent. And then after you say, okay, let me get past dressing for the opposite sex and say, okay, I want to be as comfortable as possible while I do it as well. I want to look good while I do it as well. I mean, I think the reason why, if it was left to guys alone, we just probably still be running around in loincloths, like not even caring. Mm -hmm. But just because there's a lot of ladies out there, it's like, all right, well, let's kind of put ourselves together a little bit more. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> She's a mad hug. I have it for you. <laughs> No, do you know what? I do feel that people do dress for the opposite sex. I know um, when I go on dates, I am very particular about how I look um, because I want to appear a certain way. But a case of maybe Cardi B marrying Bill Gates, I mean, a lot of people didn't assume, didn't think Black China and Rob Kardashian would get together, but they would. So I feel 
that once you're able to get past the surface, at the end of the day, surface just, is just surface, the surface, and it can mm -hmm. fade. Once you actually get to know the real essence of a person, that's when you can truly decide whether or not this is somebody you want to be with. Mm -hmm. But the way we are now, the way society is conditioned, appearance does matter. It doesn't matter. But it's kind of funny how you brought up the example of Bill Gates. I mean, we heard about this big scandal with Stormy Daniels, the mm -hmm. yeah. adult yeah. film star, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. having and whatever Trump. she had with yeah. Bill Gates as well. So I think that... No, Trump. Or... Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what am I saying? <laughs> Donald, Bill Gates. Trump. Sorry, Donald Trump. <laughs> sorry, ah, my wife is rich people. Well, from um, Melinda, it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, with Donald Trump. But yeah. however she was able to do it, she was able to work it regardless of maybe the way she dresses or the way she's recognized uh, for her recognized mm -hmm. dress style. And she was able to start, you know, rotating in those circles of the rich mm -hmm. people. So, I mean, it could work for you, just depending on how you work your angles, I guess. Mm. Do you guys think that we as a society, though, do we put too much weight or too much importance in appearance? I think so, most definitely. Like, like you're saying, we're always, we're very judgmental. Yeah. And a lot of it just is based on first impression. A lot of people, like I've had people tell me, oh, how do you wear earrings? Or, well, you have tattoos and whatnot, yeah. you know what I mean? And I'm just like, okay, so I, I like them. You know what I mean? Right. It's all about me. And they've already had an impression until they now start speaking to me and getting to know me. Then they'll say, okay, maybe you're not so bad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But That's crazy. Yes. Yeah. No, I completely agree with you. Um, like I said, not, it's not just in Nigeria. It's worldwide. Um, the way you dress, the way you talk. Um, I remember a couple of years back, the BBC wouldn't even hire you if you didn't um, speak with, you know, the Queen's English. So a lot of Irish people, or Scottish people, couldn't get jobs oh, as presenters at the BBC wow. just because of their accents, unless they changed them. So it is getting better, but we still do place a lot of emphasis on people's appearance. And do you think that women get like the brunt of it, or do men get the brunt of it? I would say women. At the end of the day, we're still living in a man's world. We're still fighting for equality, and women are judged a lot. I just think it depends on what you're looking for, ultimately. Um, if it's employment, I think that people are they're both judged. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think if it's... Um, and you're in an outing, then yeah, people are also going to be both judged. But I, when you're saying who gets the brunt of it more, men or women, I, I think it just depends on what aspect and what, what somebody's trying to do. Is. Yeah. Okay, so you think that if, like, for instance, if you were trying to get like a corporate nine to five job, right, and I go in like this, hats, they'll ah. say, okay, no, you mm -hmm. know, right from the beginning. Then they probably won't even say how much experience do I have or anything like that. They'll just say, okay, mm -hmm. well, this is not what we want to be represented as. And and, and it's a company's uh, prerogative. They can say, okay, well, this is what we want. Our employers to look, our employees to look like. But do you guys know that sometimes it doesn't just go with just your appearance? Sometimes it has to even something as simple as your name, right? So there, there was a test done. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it, but there was a resume, and on you know the front resume, let's say like the the name was like I don't know Mike Smith, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then on the other one, it was like Tom Kwashika uh -huh. Smith. But it's literally the same resume. Like right. the only thing that they changed was the name, and they picked the one with like the more proper name, mm -hmm. I guess. So, do you guys think that in certain standings or in certain situations, people should alter their appearance, the way they look, or maybe even their name, just to fit society's standard? I don't. I don't think so. Um, I just think you should just be you, you know, as much as possible, as often as possible, and. Go after what you want. If you are saying, okay, well, I can change my name or I can change who I am to try and fit somebody else's description, I think it's, it's going to be hard to keep up mm. at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah. Um, in terms of appearance, like you said, if you are going for a job um, position or so on and so forth, fair enough, just dress for the role and you can take off your suit and jacket when you get home. In terms of something like your name, I don't agree with changing that. Um, I do understand that people do get judged based on their names and... Um, Sometimes people forget about what they actually have to offer or their skills. Um, but I feel if people keep on changing their names, then who's going to start fighting for the Shaniquas? Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Shaniqua for president. Exactly. Right. Shaniqua for president. Why not? <laughs> Shaniqua's qualified later on. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I do it. All right, so uh, do you guys have any tips or I guess any um, ways to have people to better understand um, not judging people according to their appearance. I mean, I know for me, as I've gone through it, I don't think my, I guess what kind of like keeps me grounded is if my mom or my dad was to see me wearing what I'm wearing, would I be 
okay with that. I think that's what's kind of like guided me through my life. I don't know if that's like the best way. I don't know, but that's just kind of like what's guided me. Um, and also, you know, just with whoever it is that I'm with and not saying that, oh, people, and I hate it when they're like, oh, people, oh, so you're saying that you shouldn't hang out with people from the hood? No, there are people from the hood that know how to present themselves. And right. I'm not even saying, you know, to change up their accent or whatever. They just know not to be acting a hot mess. You know, there are people from the hood that do know how to do that. So I, I always kind of like judge that if people that are really important to me, such as my mom and my dad, saw me in that location, saw me with those people, would I be comfortable? What is kind of your um, takeaway or your kind of hints has helped you navigate, you know, how to be addressed? a certain way to be honest to be when it comes to um the way i present myself i think the most important thing is confidence you walk into the room and you act as if you know what you're doing as if you own the space mm -hmm. and and i work in radio as well and tech i'm pretty sure you know this as well <laughs> you can literally say absolutely nonsense on radio but if you um say it with confidence with um you know people believe you and people will follow you so i think it's just about wear whatever you want to wear in the right situation, right occasion, but carry yourself with confidence and own it. Own it. Okay. Um, I think that, number one, understand your audience. You know, if, if you're going to go after something, try to set yourself up to get that thing that you're going after. Um, it doesn't, I don't think you should sell yourself out, though. You know, don't mm -hmm. sell yourself short. I think being an individual is like one of the only things that we actually have in this world. And, and it's good to, you know, please your parents and, and be there. But at one point, I think that you just have to say, hey, you know what, I'm living for myself. I'm not living for them a any longer because they're not going to pay your bills. There's a lot that they're not going to do. They're not going to get married for you. So um, you have to aim to please yourself. And yeah, you just have to ensure that um, you kind of dress how you want to be addressed <laughs> to do so, you know? But, but, but don't lose yourself in doing it. I think, um, like, the society we have now, um, uh, there's a way a lady will dress, a lot of persons will start talking, uh, as in she, she, she won't have a good say from persons, unlike the male, they always say uh, male, male, stuff like that. In fact, the ladies have, they have more say to the ladies compared to the male. Uh, the females are actually judged because uh, of um, the components that you know they are made up of. So if um, a lady dresses out of context, depending on the location and where she's going, might actually you know depict a perception. So it's actually it's judged based on where and what kind of scenario that dress is actually perceived. D dressing decency makes a lot. You know, it's, it's give who you are. It translates you, who you are, you know. The way you dress matters a lot. You know, if you dress anyhow, they will address you that way. You know, for me wearing a skimping dress, you know, anybody can come to me and talk to me anyhow, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that my behaviors is like that. But due to my dressing, they will address me exactly with that. I believe it's both ways. A male who dresses indecently should be told that he has dressed indecently. Male, females too, who also dress skimpy and uh, dress in such a way that there's no difference between them and uh, you know somebody who's just on the streets should also be judged accordingly. A woman should dress decently. Well, I think culturally, the culture is more lenient to the guys than the ladies. I don't know about judging. But I would say that yes, it's the, the culture is more lenient traditionally. It's more we are more we are, we are likely to be more lenient with the guys than the ladies. Females are judged more than the male in this part of the world because the females go extraordinarily. They go out of their way to to dress well. A lot of people go out of their way to dress well. Of course, what you term as dressing well is not what the next person would term as dressing well. So it depends on your culture, it depends on your background, it depends on your religion. So many, so many things are factors to your dressing well and not dressing well. But you cannot see judge the way person dress. It depends on the, the person moral, the way they train, they brought him up or he or she up. 
Um, okay, so right before we wrap up the conversation, I do want to um, want to bring up this, I guess this point, right? So a lot of the times, the way that, you know, they keep saying, oh, dress how you want to be addressed and things like that. But do you think that perhaps that only has to do with the time that we live in? And here's, here's what, why I'm bringing this up. The same thing with the guys and like this hood or whatever, the times that we're living in is really polarized and it's kind of telling people, I, I think people are like really scared of black people now. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from. So I think that's also another thing. You know, Trayvon Martin, he was just walking around with a hoodie candy in his pocket, but that kind of polarized. So I'm sure nowadays parents are now telling their kids, don't be wearing hoodies or whatever in the middle of the night, things like that. And then also when it comes to, you know, us as, you know, females and men here, oh, guys, they want to make sure that they got the hot babes and they know that nowadays for some reason, babes like money in Nigeria. So now they want to try to package themselves in a certain way. Why do you think we're kind of changing certain standards based upon the time that we're in? I, I don't think anything's actually changing. I think, I mean, Babes being attracted to money has always kind of been there, you know, hey. since the beginning of time. Who I doesn't mean, like money? You know? <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so I think it's always been there. And then even when it comes to, like, situations with Trayvon Martin, I think it's always been there as well. It's just that now that with the advance of technology, technology um, people are able to capture it. People mm. are able to put it out there. It can go from one continent to the next in just a minute. So I think that we're just seeing more of it more readily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's always been there. I mean, I've been reading a lot of um, classical literature. And okay, Simi, girl, you better go. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of classical, classical literature, literature, you know? <laughs> you know how people... <laughs> okay. Hold yeah, on, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, okay, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Teacher Michelle Obama right I, here. I was bored. I had a lot of time in my hands, uh -huh. and it was free on, you know, my pad, so why not? <laughs> See, I play Candy Crush when I'm bored. You know? She reads classical <laughs> literature. Sounds good. <laughs> But um, there'll be times where, you know, back in the day when women were covered from the, you know, next to the um, to the ankles, a woman from a good background would go to a party and her dress would be slightly more revealing. And people were like, oh, scandal. Mm -hmm. oh, she showed her, her ankles. <laughs> you understand? Oh. Yeah. The guy would be like, oh, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you see her ankles, man. Damn. Exactly. So I think it's always been there. But I just feel as fashion develops and changes, you know, people find more ways to sort of typecast. Mm -hmm. um, individuals. Okay, all right. That sounds like a really intellectual note to leave it on. <laughs> um, after this, I'm going to go read some classical literature. Uh, thank you guys <laughs> very much for being on the show. I thank you guys also at home for watching. Be sure to join the Indani family and follow us on all of our social media platforms at Indani TV and use the hashtag Indani Real Talk. Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Do women get judged more for how they're dressing? Are men the cause of it? I mean, men are typically to blame for everything. <laughs> okay. almost, almost. That's why it's a man's world. I know, right? But either way, let us know what your thoughts are, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs>